Hello, hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I greet you all according to your time and locations. So you'll be watching this video. Yes, my dear viewers, I am back again with another update. So guys, I have a video here I would like we all to watch. But before then, if you're meeting my channel for the very first time, you're highly welcome. Please kindly do well to like, share, and subscribe. Leave your thought on the comment section. Let us know what you think about this video, and I will see you towards the end. Just coming out of this election, I've also been heavily debated. I know you are a, a reputable lawyer in the land, and I know that you know the rules guiding um, uh, substantial um, cases before the court, and I know you might not want to delve into those matters, but without having to touch on the meat of the petitions before the presidential election tribunal, there's been a lot of controversy. Can you please give some kind of uh, expansion and exp uh, some kind of explainer on what has divided many Nigerians on the issue of the Section 134 of the Constitution in just simple time without delving into the meat of what is before the court. When I had expressed an opinion on uh, Section 134 of the Constitution on the 23rd of January this year, that's about a month before the presidential election, on that occasion, uh, I expressed a legal opinion. Uh, and that was why I was very hesitant to join the bandwagon when lawyers started giving political interpretation of that section. Um, my position this year, in January this year, and I think it was my respected colleague, Olisa Agbakova, that expressed concern and drew the attention of the INEC to Section 134 of the Constitution, and that it might create some problem. And on that occasion, uh, through your medium, uh, I did say that there is no electoral college in Nigeria, and therefore, the votes cast, you know, or recorded in any part of are equal. Uh, Section 134 of the Constitution specifically requires a winner of a presidential election to meet certain requirements. The first one is to score the majority of lawful votes, and the second one is the territorial spread two-thirds majority of the states and the federal capital territory. And since the federal capital territory has been interpreted to be the 37th state in it for the purpose of the Constitution, I didn't see any controversy at the material time, and that was when I expressed my opinion. But now that it has become a serious legal Easy. Uh, and the matter is now pending court. I'm very, very reluctant to speak definitively on the section because there are decisions of our court on the status of Abuja, two judgments of the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court. There is also the judgment of the Supreme Court on equality of votes recorded in every state in the country. And so seeing these decisions are available to all lawyers in Nigeria, to all my colleagues, I would have expected the debate to be anchored on decided cases, particularly by the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court. Again, what I said, since the matter is pending in the Court of Appeal already. Uh, it has been raised in some of the petitions. To that extent, uh, I'm, not, I'm, 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 not, I'm not 
uh, expected to express my opinion so that one does not uh, uh, disrespect the court. But as, as I did say, I'd express an opinion when the election had not held a month of the presidential election. And I stand by my position, which is that Abuja is, has been interpreted to be at the seventh state in it. I, I can't go beyond that for now, Shim. I know, I know you can. That if, uh, for a lot of, it's been a lot of controversies and there's been a lot of division uh, along party lines on the interpretation. Some will say, oh, it comes interpreted. Some say, no, it has been decided by our court. Of course, Section 134, for those who do not have their constitution very close, let me state, state brief, I mean, just concisely, what the, uh, the, the lawyer, uh, Mr. Falano, just stated now, and because Mr. Falano doesn't want to go deeper into it, you might as well just go onto China's YouTube page, and uh, uh, that's uh, ChinaStvWeb.com, and you can also find out for yourself what Mr. Fallon has said earlier. We do. We are not lawbreakers. We do not want to uh, touch on what the, uh, the, the courts are going to be deliberating on. Highest number of votes, and of course, spread to third, 25 percent uh, into third of the state of the federation plus the AFCT. We'll be hoping and looking forward to what the court will decide on this matter. Um, perhaps we'll lay that to rest if there's anything that happened. And so, Mr. Ballard, I'm not sure a lot of people imagined that the 1979 scenario could play out. Uh, for some people, I said, uh, this is looking like, it may not be exactly like this. Did you envision that this election might be, for example, we had uh, perhaps the, the lowest uh, percentage of votes that have been won by anybody that has been declared as president-elect in this country in this election. Did you ever thought that this election this was coming out of this matter. election are also being heavily debate, debated? I know you are a, a reputable lawyer in the land, and I know that you know the rules guiding um, uh, substantial um, cases before the court, and I know you might not want to delve into those matters, but without having to touch on the meat of the petitions before the presidential election tribunal, there's been a lot of controversy. Can you please give some kind of uh, expansion and exp uh, some kind of explainer on what has divided many Nigerians on the issue of the Section 134 of the Constitution in just simple terms without diving into the meat of what is before the court? Well, I had expressed an opinion on uh, Section 134 of the Constitution on the 23rd of January this year, that's about a month before the presidential election. On that occasion, uh, I expressed a legal opinion. Uh, and that was why I was very hesitant to join the bandwagon when lawyers started giving political interpretation of that section. Um, my position this year, in January this year. And I think it was my respected colleague, Olisa Agbakova, that expressed concern and drew the attention of the INEC to Section 134 of the Constitution and that it might create some... So guys, thank you so much for watching. What do you think about this video? Please kindly drop your thoughts on the comment section. I'll see you again in my next one. Bye for now.